initially a privilege, Mr. President. Uh, uh, Mr. President, it has been said, Mr. President, that, and I quote, the land is the only thing in the world worth working for, worth fighting for, worth dying for, because, because it's the only thing that lasts. And uh, that was a quote uh, in Gone with the Wind, written by Margaret Mitchell, uh, the father of uh, uh, of Scarlett O'Hara, General O'Hara, was talking about, talking about the Old South, Mr. President. Without land, we cannot create wealth. That is something that uh, was suggested there. Now, Mr. President, property ownership is the independent right of a person to the exclusive employment or enjoyment and control of a property including its disposition and recovery, subject only to the restrictions established by law and rights of others, Mr. President. Uh, to the effect that all lands of the public domain belong to the state, and that the state is the source of any asserted right to ownership in land and charged with the conversion of such patrimony. Under this doctrine, or the Regalian doctrine, all lands not otherwise appearing to be clearly within private ownership are presumed to belong to the state. Uh, the regarding doctrine is, is to the effect that all lands of the party to belong to the state, the state is the source of any asserted right to ownership in land and charged with the conversion of such patrimony under this doctrine. All lands that otherwise appearing to be clearly within private ownership are presumed to belong to the state. Now, the Constitution, Mr. President, under the 1987 Constitution, Section 3, Article 12, uh, and this is just for background for everyone, Mr. President, because this is not a very easy law. Lands of the public domain are classified into Section 3. Lands of the public domain are classified into agri one, agricultural, two, forests or timber, three, mineral lands, and four, national parks. Agricultural lands of the public domain may be further classified by law according to the uses to which they may be devoted. Alienable lands of the public domain shall be limited to agricultural lands. Private corporations and associations may not hold such alienable lands of the public domain except by lease, Mr. President. And that for a period not exceeding 25 years, renewable for not more than 25 years, and not to exceed 1,000 hectares in area. Citizens of the Philippines may, the Philippines may lease, however, not more than 500 hectares or require not more than 12 hectares thereof by purchase, homestead, or grant. Now, Mr. President, uh, of course, uh, the uh, uh, the law that, uh, uh, there are several laws that uh, cover all these provisions in the Constitution, including Commonwealth Act 141 or the Public Land Law, as well as certain provisions of the Civil Code, Mr. President, particularly Article 420, 421, and 422. So, Mr. President, uh, 420, uh, uh, the following things are property of public dominion, those intended for public use, such as roads, canals, rivers, torrents, ports, and bridges constructed by the state, banks, shores, roadsides, and others of similar character. Those, those which belong to the state without being for public use and are intended for some public service or for the development of the national wealth. That is reserved to the state. Now, under Article 42, 421 of the Civil Code, all other property of the state, which is not of the character stated in the preceding article, is patrimonial property, which means that the state no longer desires to use it for public use or for some public service or for the development of the national wealth. And that is why it allows its citizens to acquire such lands for their benefit, Mr. President, and the benefit of the country. Now, Article 40, 422, it's so almost a reiteration, but an expansion of Article 421 and 420. Property of public dominion, when no longer intended for public use or for public service, shall form part of the patrimonial property of the state. Under Article 422, there must be a formal declaration by the executive or possibly legislative department of the government that the property of the state is no, no longer needed for public use or for public service. Otherwise, the property continues to be property of public dominion, notwithstanding the fact that it is not actually devoted for such use or service. Now, Mr. President, uh, uh, let me now go into the proposal that, uh, of the law, Mr. President. 
Property rights are important to the country's growth and development. Unclear and unenforceable rights of property could lead to underinvestment, undervalued properties, land grabbing, fake titling, lack of access to credit, and ultimately, and certainly, poverty, Mr. President. Land title is a clear proof of ownership and is important to protection of one's property rights. In the Philippines, title to land can be obtained through either administrative mode or judicial mode. Hence the title, uh, you know, uh, working for the judicial or uh, rather uh, judicial or administrative uh, uh, confirmation of imp imperfect titles, Mr. President. Now, Mr. President, uh, we would like to say that uh, the proposed, uh, the, NR, the DNR processing record breaking numbers in its first years of implementation with more than 382,000 529 titles issued to date. Now, Mr. President, this has been uh, obfuscated, if you will, in the case of Malabanan versus Republic. The Supreme Court, without uh, legislative policy, which we do, uh, would never try to rock the boat, Mr. President, and says that Congress may lay down a new phase of land reform to sensibly regularize and formalize the settlement of such lands, which in legal theory are lands of the public domain. Congress may have to liberalize the standards for judicial confirmation of imperfect title or amend the civil code itself. Uh, actually, Mr. President, if you will recall, uh, in the previous uh, Senate, uh, we authored uh, Republic Act Number 10023 uh, to, to agricultural free patent under Section 44 of Commonwealth Act Number 141, uh, the Public Land Act, integrating and liberalizing court confirmation of imperfect titles under the provision of Presidential Decree Number 1529, Property Registration Decree, and CA Number 141, the Public Land Law, and remove the time period for application on both free patent and confirmation of imperfect title that is about to expire on December 31, 2020. Now, Mr. President, uh, this is for the proposed law. I'm sorry. Uh, I was quoting from the Republic Act Number 1023, which liberalized the acquisition by poor people who own 200 square meters to be able to get uh, their titles, Mr. President. Now, the first primary objective of this law is to address the difficulties encountered in proving ownership since 1945 and the strict standards set by the Supreme Court in the judicial confirmation of imperfect titles, Mr. President. Now, Mr. President, for some reason, they picked a number, a date, June 12, 1945, which where we were still at war where uh, buildings and public government buildings were being burned and where people were being killed so much so that it makes it very difficult uh, to show tax declaration certificates or for that matter, uh, witnesses uh, to the fact that somebody has owned it, uh, that a piece of land uh, 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 for, for quite a while, Mr. In, uh, uh, Mr. President. The courts consistently reject land applications that are not supported by primary evidence or that are supported only by certifications coming from DNR, delegated officials or surveys conducted by duly licensed genetic engineers and approved by DNR and designated authorities. To prove that the subject land applied for is alienable and disposable, the courts require that an applicant must present the following evidence. One, a set of the original classification approved by the DNR secretary and certified as a true copy by the legal custodian of the official records. And two, central certification should be accompanied by an official publication of the DNR secretary's issuance declaring the land is alienable and disposable. While the courts impose stringent requirements, it should be emphasized that the document certifying that the land is within alienable and disposable lands, even though given by the secretary of the DNR, will not show the relative location of the land. There is difficulty, therefore, in establishing substantive evidence as the courts require the presentation, as I said earlier, of tax declarations, and it is impossible to find witnesses who can still testify. Thus, it creates a barrier in availing the judicial proceedings for the registration of lands under PD 1529, not to mention the fact that the poor cannot just get lawyers to help them uh, uh, in judicial proceedings, Mr. President, or for that matter, Proper property registration decree. 
This bill removes the need for personal certification of the DNR secretary. He's very way up there, Mr. President. We also have a hard time trying to get to certain cabinet officials, including the DNR, you know, for example, in this particular case, for the common man, in proving that land is considered alienable and disposable lands and the barriers of proving ownership since. In Section 3 of the bill, a duly licensed geodetic engineer verified and approved by a designated DNR official shall be allowed to provide sufficient evidence based on actual plotting of land and survey map in the regional trial court where the land is located for the confirmation of the claims. For purposes of the issuance of certification on the alienable and the disposable status of the land, it is sufficient that the projection map be prepared by the DNR genetic engineer showing the relative position of the land in the land classification map and shall be approved by the DNR secretary or his duly authorized representatives. The projection map shall contain a sworn statement by the DNR genetic engineer that the land is within the alienable and disposable lands of the public domain and shall state the applicable forestry administrative order, DNR administrative order, executive order, and proclamations and the land classification map approved by the DNR secretary. Another feature of the bill is that it harmonizes and shortens the period of possession required for perfecting or perfection of imperfect titles from the current Seventy to four years, counted from 1945, now down to 30 years. The administrative legalization of pre patents in Section 4, on the other hand, shortened the processing period of 120 days at the Community Enforcement, Environment, and Natural Resources Office, or CENDRO, and five days approval disapproval at the Provincial Environment, uh, Environment and Natural Resources Office, or PENRO, in provinces with no CENDRO the application shall be filed with the PENRO. In case of conflicting claims among different claimants, upon the issuance of the title, the parties may seek the proper judicial application and administrative application. In the judicial application, the possessor is deemed to have acquired by operation of law right to a grant over the land. The original registration of the title via judicial proceedings takes place as a matter of course. The registration court does not grant the applicant title over the property, but recognizes the applicant's existing title, which had already vested upon the applicant's compliance with the requirement of open, continuous, exclusive, and notorious possession and occupation of the land since June 12, 1945. Whereas the applicant for an administrative free patent recognizes that the land applied for belongs to the government. A patent by its very definition is a governmental grant of a right a privilege or authority while the DNR has exclusive jurisdiction. In the exercise of this jurisdiction, the DNR has the power to resolve conflicting claims over public lands and determine an applicant's entitlement to the grant of a free patent. Now let's go to the second primary objective of the bill, to remove the fixed term set on December 31, 2020, as stated under Republic Act number 9176 for the filing of application of agricultural free patents and confirmation of imperfect title under section 44 and 48. After this period, titling of agricultural lands through free patent will cease to exist. This will result in an impasse where unregistered owners of agricultural lands will no longer be able to formalize their ownership if no law is passed to extend or remove the period of application. No new agricultural free patent will be issued by DNR. We now, therefore, remove under this proposed bill a law the deadline for the application to free patent, making it that available at any time, Mr. President, for qualified beneficiaries. The latest amendment under Article RA9176, or rather Republic Act 9176 in 2002, is the longest extension period of 20 years. This has generated a total of 1,544,762 patents covering 1,441,729 hectares of land, or an annual average of 90,868 90, patents issued. If this will not be extended, poor rural farmers may not be able to title their lands, considering that judicial titling is more expensive relative to administrative titling, with all the lawyers and all 
the necessary accoutrements uh, to file and uh, to apply. The annual averages of patents issued remain high, especially from 1971 to the present, with the average ranging from 72,000 to 92,000 patents. The Land Management Bureau reported that there are 395,136 hectares, or around 2 million parcels of estimated untitled agricultural lands in the Philippines at the moment. 14.1 million hectares of alienable and disposable lands consists of 9.5 million hectares. 67% have already been titled administratively as of July 2020. 1.99 million hectares, or 14%, were judicially titled. The remaining 2.27 million hectares, 16%, are those turned over to other agencies by proclamation and non-agricultural uses, which include road network and open spaces. I guess you might include the BCDA, the FBMA, or for that matter, military bases or other uh, projects of the government in this de uh, description. The remaining untitled area consisting of 0 0.37 million hectares, or 3%, will be the focus of the land disposition efforts. For 2001 to 2018, most agricultural free patent holders can be found in region, regions CAR 1, 7, 8, and Caraga. In terms of land area, Region 12 has the highest number of total agricultural lands distributed and agricultural free patent uh, holders in Region 12 have the highest average land holdings per, page, per, per patent at 2.7 hectares, followed by Caraga with an average of 1.3 hectares per holder. The data shows that the number of patents issued is not yet on a decline. To the contrary, it shows that there is an increase in the number of patents issued under the last amendment. We wish to grant our citizens the right to property that a specific period for the processing and issuance of patents would provide a fast and efficient land titling in the Philippines, aside from it being consistent with the ease of doing business and efficient government service delivery act. Mr. President, my dear colleagues, I urge everyone to support this measure for our rural farmers, especially the poor. This will help rural farmers secure land titles considering that judicial titling is more expensive relative to administrative titling. Pakitulungan po natin ang mga magsasaka at mga mahihirap na mabigyan ng titulo ang lupang kaakibat ng kanilang kabuhayan at pagunlan para meron man lang silang mapamana sa kanilang mga anak o maiprenda o mapautang sa mga bangko at makapagpalawak ng kanilang anak buhay. At ito ay napakalaking tulong upang mayangat natin ang kalidad ng buhay nila. Land title is important to protection of one's property rights, and it is necessary to foster investment, employment, and growth in the country. Thank you, Mr. President.